Hi, welcome to the channel. In this video, I finish off rounding off the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer, trim the ends, and then crack on with creating the elevator bows and laminating them up using a slightly different technique to the one used for the leading edge. This isn't an instructional video, this is just how I do things. If you get any hints or tips from it, that's all the better. So let's crack on and look at the video. see I've drawn a center line uh, on the leading edge here and if I've got a round over bit which has got a radius of half the thickness of the material but the roller is sitting below that center line so when I do the second cut on the other side uh, it would be sitting into the bit that's already been cut so what I'll do is I'll set this up so that it's about a sixteenth of an inch uh, above that center line and we'll still get quite a good round over which I'll finish off with sanding. You can see that the uh, stabiliser is clamped down while I'm doing the routing and that the excess of the laminations is there so that the router will not go around the end onto the spar section. Right, so just to uh, round this off a bit more where the router wasn't as low as it could be because of the uh, fact it would go over the centre line. I'm now going to sand uh, the edges here to, at a shallower angle, uh, concentrating on the plywood. An angle like that. And be able to tell that you're doing it evenly along by keeping the lines parallel on the ply itself as you go around the corners. like that and that just gives a, a, a nicer round over for the start off with. Now with that uh, shallowly sanded at an angle like that with the block it's now time to round things over so I'm just using 180 make sure you sort of break it so that it, uh, it rolls nice and easily just a thin strip of uh, emery and it's a case of don't put too much tension on you just you're just wanting to round the edge so. bit more time spent where the plywood is hardly any tension at all just enough to get it to go around the edge like that And that will uh, carry on from there. Just for final round over, I've got a high density foam piece which I've dremeled with a, with a round tool to produce a channel to fit on there. Just put a piece of, I'm using 180 grit wet and dry, just get that formed around the leading edge bit and then there we go, we can do a nice finish sand to smooth out that, uh, that radius. Right, so I just want to finish off this uh, end here where I've just cut off the, uh, the laminations with a tenon saw. Uh, this is inset the thickness of the friction material I have here and the block here has got a section where there isn't any friction material which is the thickness of the MDF. It's all set at 90 degrees so by holding the block at 90 degrees like this I can run the, the uh, sanding across the joint it will make it absolutely perpendicular and straight there's no chance of curving it and point of fact I cut that really fairly accurately it's just a little bit there still 
There we go, that's the end of the joint. Now, this section here will end up getting sanded a bit uh, to match the elevators once the elevators are complete. But hopefully, it shouldn't take too much. I'm expecting about maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe slightly less. Okay, so I'm uh, going to laminate this up slightly differently to the way I did the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. I've put on a really strong tape, and it's clear, so it won't show very well on the camera, uh, along the uh, what will be the outer face of the outer laminate. I've selected the uh, wood, or sorted the wood rather, uh, so that the straightest grain, ones with the least least runouts going to, to one side or the other are, are going to be used on the faces and the ones with a little bit more runouts but still well within acceptable levels are going to be sandwiched in the center and also the way the runouts are going to go that you know that they'll be slightly diagonal so if it's running out like this piece here it's running very slightly out towards this side it'll be next to a piece that's running out slightly towards that side so that way that they're interlinked as you can see down here hopefully if I lower the camera you can see I've got a lot more blocks involved uh, for this radius and what I'll be doing is I'll be uh, using uh, these this type of uh, clamp just to slowly pull them incrementally into position uh, the, the laminates into position before I clamp them rather than just trying to force it into one pushing it into one place and using the, the normal clamps uh, if I did that with this being so close to the maximum uh, tightness of radius for the strip wood uh, we'd end up with it cracking and breaking Here I am uh, applying the resin, uh, the same as I did on the leading edge, I'm only applying it to one face of the laminate. Trying to incrementally pull the laminations into the form there. Not clamping too tightly, we don't want to expel all the glue, but we do need to hold into that radius, which is going to try and straighten out of. And here I'm just tapping down with the hammer to make sure the laminations are at the same height. As you've seen from the time lapse when I was doing the lamination, uh, it's hard to try, I was trying to manipulate three clamps, so two clamps would be used on the next one. Lesson learned, but we've got success. I'm just going to take these clamps out of the way, and I'm going to use the same blocks and jig for doing my second one. That way, I know I've got two identical, as near as identical as we can have, uh, bows, laminations uh, going. It saves me having to put even more holes in my workbench. We've got a good coat of uh, resin going through, there's not much in the way of any steps there on the laminations, so it will sand easily. And if I peel this tape, which is what I would put onto the leading edge there, get that off. got that's really seemed to work well uh, as it has done in the past uh, to make sure that there's been no splintering out at all of fibers absolutely no sign of any sort of uh, splinter or anything like that uh, and there we have a bow ready to go I'll uh, I'll sand that down whilst the other one is uh, being laid up.
this one's been uh, sanded I've just taken out uh, the next one uh, which will need to be sanded and if we do a comparison check on there it's uh, really a good match an excellent match uh, no no difference at all uh, that's, uh, that, you can, that I can see um, one thing I didn't mention when I took out uh, the bows is I put a little uh, mark on there uh, that signifies the point there so that when I put put it back into uh, position I can just put it right back into where it, it should go. This concludes the video for uh, for now. The next video I will be uh, putting the tail. I'll put the tailplane together, but I won't be showing that in great detail. It'll mainly be time lapse because it's similar to the uh, horizontal stabilizer side. But I'll also be talking to you uh, about a couple of decisions I've made with regards to the tailplane elevator specifically. So. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.